find that one of the accused persons was unwell, who did not attend court, actually extremely unwell. Secondly, the other accused persons as well indicated to the court that they were unwell. Uh, what they had gone for assessment, first of all, was mental assessment. It was not anything else to do with other complications that they might have gotten thereafter. So, somehow, I find that uh, the ruling that had been given there today about it, that uh, they had been assessed, was totally, can I say, it was just uh, with, with blinders, in that the court did not look at any other thing that was a possibility. You see, if one of the accused person is totally down, and cannot be make, be, come to court, and cannot be able to be carried to court, and it is signs of COVID, and the others are complaining that they are having signs of COVID, and they have been coming together, isn't that possible? Isn't that a question that one of the things that probably I think that a court can ask itself? But what does the court do? We have withdrawn from the matter, yes. But uh, as friends of the court, we must be able to comment and say one thing. When an accused person has been given a right of choice of advocate, it is a fundamental right and nobody can in any way, any way, wrap it off. But the court has done what? Has told the accused persons that they must appear before the deputy registrar tomorrow and be given an advocate. Where is choice here? Hasn't it been snatched from them? And then you are given a right on top of it that if you do not take an advocate of choice, then what happens? You should be considered that you have decided to, to abandon that right. That right can never be abandoned. It is there. So what happens then? If the accused person who has asked for time, time to get another advocate, is being blackmailed into coming to court the next day to be given an advocate, are we serving justice really? Is it really fair? When a person asks for time, how do you calculate it? They must be able to have access, they must be able to move, they must be able to call a lawyer, they must be able to sit with the lawyers in, in, and in that interview, realize whether that lawyer is competent enough to be able to handle this matter. But if the court is just going to pick any lawyer, this person who is an accused person must have that right to actually take time with that lawyer and see whether that lawyer can sufficiently serve the purpose. So, remember one thing. In a murder trial, an advocate must be present. Or, let me say in another way, an accused person must be represented. Uh, the law society says that uh, the accused person's the plea must be taken. When there are no lawyers, a trial begins when? The moment you take your plea, the moment you've been brought to court and you're taking your plea, the trial has begun. If you can take a plea without that, then what does it mean? You are unrepresented initially in the trial. Then it's against the constitutional right. The court has been able to address that issue properly and say, yes, uh, these people must be represented because that is where it starts. That one we accept and we agree with the court. But when the court goes a step further and decides to say that the accused persons must take a lawyer from the state, add any other lawyer that they want, but in case they do not uh, appear by tomorrow to be taking lawyers, then they have abdicated that right. That cannot be right at all. That cannot be just. Should the accused persons reinstate their instructions to you? Will you be willing to take up the instruction? Even, even if the accused persons are, uh, are coming to court tomorrow and they are not seeing that this other advocate is probably are competent or not, you see, they are, uh, the accused person can take time. He needs to be given time to decide, is it safer for him to go for state lawyers? Is it okay for him to, to go back to the other lawyers? Can he be able to convince us? Uh, that we can, he can give us further instructions. Remember, we are not moving out of the case because we do not want to go on with it. We are going out of the case because we do not have further instructions. Let that be clear. We do not have instructions to proceed beyond the plea taking. So when it is seen, it is seen that it is in bad faith, how can bad faith be beyond our instructions? Our instructions are stop the plea, we don't want to take plea, we are unwell, uh, and uh, we need uh, more time, we need to recover, that's it. The court comes and says, no, proceed. Where are our instructions beyond that? Let not fingers be pointed at us. Our instructions were sufficiently to that level. If they come and tell us they want us to represent them again, we shall do so. We cannot shy off. It is one of the things we've taken us to do. We will come back.
It has withdrawn, it has drawn instruction. The whole defense team. It has said the OCS to explain the whereabouts. We are saying the whereabouts of the second accused person is because of sickness. The OCS is present. Mr. Mori, I thought you already responded to that. Please, based on the medical question, you, my lord, you can hear the OCS in three minutes' time to explain whether they were taken to hospital and whether they were tested or Council, my law society president, is really going over. Nobody is raising the question of what they are alleged to have done. They are, the suspects are innocent until the court convicts them. Working on emotions of people that these are the killers fine, is fine, not fine, before fine, this. Fine, Mr. Harvey, maybe you can express it in another really way. really needs to apologize by calling the <laughs> clients murderers. I don't think he said that, Mr. Mary. Of course, I've not <laughs> noted it, but I heard him say too late. And the submissions, my Lord, are based on our prayer that they are, the suspects are not ready to take Pursuant to the following reasons. They pleaded to be taken to hospital. I personally went to Capitol Police Station The six were taken to Kenyatta National Hospital. They were never tested for COVID. The night The six suffered the whole night. My Lord, that explains why the second accused person is not before you. The state tells you they are surprised. Yet the second accused person was in the state custody. Based on that, my lord, the non attendance of the second accused person is a serious issue. That the state wants to we shall wait. She has, they have tried to drag her here by force. And I wish they succeeded. 
so that the court is able to see the type of the human treatment these six people are being exposed. Secondly, my Lord, the accused are before you. As one to a miscellaneous application number, I gave the number, that was when the state sought for 14 days. The same miscellaneous application is still alive. Just a minute. None of us can so we are involved. We are dealing with the legal questions. Proceeding from that premise, the five who are before court, court to be read the charges and take a plea to the manner they propose. Lord, uh, Honorable Chief Magistrate Lundi gave an order to detain the six for a limited period of time lapsing today. 